been in uh, 82 counties this year. Uh, my theme song. Uh, been in 82 counties this year. Uh, there, this is the 82nd. I'll be in the 83rd tonight. It's going to be in Monroe County. And then, uh, uh, so it's a beautiful county. This is, a, I've driven through it before, but it's the first time I've gotten to spend any time here. So I'm going to be pretty brief because I want to just take a few questions. I have about 20 minutes or so here uh, until I get back in, in, in the car. Um, but then I want to get to any questions that you might have. But let, let's just talk. I want to talk, tell you a little bit about myself, what my background is, and then a little bit about what I think has been going on in state in the last couple of years that I think uh, where the state has been heading in the wrong direction and, and why I think we should head in a different direction. So just to tell you a little bit about my background, I'm 45 years of age. My wife and I have been married for uh, almost 22 years. We have four kids. I have two sons and two daughters. My sons are 20 and 17, and my daughters are, my daughters are 15 and 13. Uh, so I used to say I had four teenagers, but my life is getting better. Now I'm like three. <laughs> Um, I was, uh, I've had a good life, I've had, I, I have very good parents, my father's passed away now, my mother's 85, uh, my parents were both born in the, during the depression, they did not have a lot of money, uh, my dad was in the Air Force and my mother was in the Red Cross, and they met during the Korean War, and uh, they had eight children, I was the seventh of, uh, of the eight kids. And I used to ask my mom, why did you have so many kids? And she would say, well, you were number seven, so just be happy that we did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my parents just taught us some pretty basic values. And my guess is you were probably raised uh, the same way. Uh, we were taught to work hard. Don't expect anything. You've got to work for what you, uh, what you want. Get an education. Take care of your family. But your success in life is not just about how much money you make and how much money you have in the bank. You also need to give something back to your community, whether it's your school system or your or your township or your county or or, or whatever the case may be. My parents were not political, uh, very political. They loved President Kennedy, uh, uh, maybe because his his middle name was our last name, but whatever the reason was, <laughs> they loved President Kennedy. But they weren't political people. But they that's just kind of how they raised us, and that's how we're trying to raise my my four kids. When I look at the way that the state has been run in the last few years, um, I don't think it's being run uh, according to those values. I, I think uh, Governor Kasich runs the state for the benefit of a very small group of people. And it's usually people that are either very close to him or are already doing very, very well. You know, Republicans, and I know there's a few in this county, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they like to pretend like the like the disagreement in American politics is between uh, Republicans that don't want government to do anything and Democrats that want government to do everything. That that is not what the what, that isn't what the debate is about. Uh, they've supported government actions in all kinds of areas and all kinds of policies, um, and we don't always think the government should do everything. But when government does take a role in something, it ought to be. Uh, looking at helping people that work for a living, middle class people, that's what policies, that's what the state, state policy should be. Now, if you look at what's happened in the last couple years, it's been the opposite of that in a whole bunch of different areas. So if you just run through the, the things that happened in the last three years, and keep in mind, by the way, uh, Ted Strickland was only defeated by 77,000 votes in a state of more than 11 million people. So the question that I always ask people to ask themselves is, if people knew what John Kasich was going to do in 2010, would that have made a difference of at least 77,000 votes? And you start going through a list of the things that happened, starting with uh, Senate Bill 5, uh, which lost overwhelmingly, I think it might have passed in this county, but it lost <laughs> overwhelmingly across the state by 20 percentage points. Uh, then they cut aid to local schools. And your local schools in this, in this county have lost, they've lost well over a million dollars in uh, state funding in the first budget. Then they cut local government. Your local government's lost well over a million dollars also. Then you look at what they've done just in the last budget, where if you're making $500,000 a year, and I hope you are, but I'm not, and most people in this state do not, if you make $500,000 a year, you're going to get a $6,000 tax cut if 
you made $50,000 a year, you're going to get a $9 tax cut. If you make closer to $30,000 a year, you'll get nothing. If you're a senior citizen or you're on a fixed income, whether it's Social Security or pension, you'll get nothing. Your taxes will go up because they raise everybody's sales taxes. They took 12.5% of the state share of property taxes out, which is going to hurt all of the local schools. It's going to make everybody's uh, taxes go up. They're changing the homestead exemption for seniors so that uh, from now on, if you make more than $30,000 a year, you won't get a homestead exemption uh, anymore for, for your home that you own. Uh, they've created this entity called uh, Jobs Ohio, which is basically taking state money and putting it into a private corporation to make economic development deals, and no one's allowed to know how they spend the money. It's a secret how they spend the money uh, or who gets the money sometimes. And they so, won't be audited either. Well, when, they, when the state auditor, who happens to be a Republican, tried to audit them, they refused to turn over their documents. When he subpoenaed their documents, they passed a law at the request of Governor Kasich. In 48 hours, they passed a law uh, preventing the state auditor from auditing the state of Ohio, the, the, uh, the, the uh, Jobs, uh, Jobs Ohio program. Um, that's something that really rang a bell with me because I didn't go back through my resume too much except my, my family history, but uh, when I got out of school, I got my law degree, I worked my way through law school, and then I was a special agent with the FBI for a few years where I investigated uh, public corruption, uh, mostly in Chicago, which has had it from time to time. Uh, <laughs> but when people sometimes ask me, they say, what's the relevance of your background in terms of cleaning up corruption, which I also did as a prosecutor, and I've done it, I'm a county official now, and we've cleaned up corruption in our own county. When government is secret, when they're allowed to make decisions in private and behind closed doors and nobody knows about it, that's when the worst things happen. And the fact that they've created this enormous Jobs Ohio program, which is eventually going to have billions of dollars in it, and it's not allowed to be audited by the state auditor, is a very, very bad idea. It's just a matter of time, I think, before something happens that's illegal. So when you add all those things up, I think what all of them have in common is that you have state government being run for the benefit of a very small group of people who are already doing well. And regular people have their taxes going up. They have their funding to public schools that's being cut uh, on property tax issues and sales tax issues. And I just think that there's a, there's a different path that, that we should be taking. We ought to be talking about putting more money into especially early childhood education and, and K through 12 education. There's been no plan to make college education more affordable. It's become less affordable in the last few years. You know, not everybody has to get a college degree. Not every, you know, most people in Ohio don't have a college degree. But what we know is that uh, about two-thirds of the jobs in Ohio in the next 30 or 40 years are going to require something besides a high school degree. And we've got to start planning for that, and we're not, we're not doing it right now. Kids are getting out of college right now with tens of thousands of dollars of debt. Their parents are taking second mortgages out on their house. The other big thing, and this is another, this is another kind of window into the way they think about, the way Governor Kasich thinks about the world and the way that I do, is when he talks about Ohio's economy, the term that he's used more than any other adjective is that it's a miracle. The economy is so good in Ohio, it's a miracle. And that the rest of the world is always looking at us to try to figure out how, how have we gotten such great results. That just, that just doesn't add up. Uh, jobs numbers just came out um, Friday, yesterday, and for the second time this year, we lost more jobs than any other state in the country except one. Um, we're, we have the exact same unemployment rate now as the rest of the country does. So what's the, if the Republicans are saying, well, our economy is too slow, then well, if we have the same unemployment rate, then why is Ohio a miracle? Um, in the last 14 months, we've added jobs in Ohio at a slower rate than the rest of the country. So we're underperforming what the rest of the country is doing. And as I've talked to people across Ohio, again, I think it depends who are you in touch with and who do you talk to. If you talk to people like Governor Kasich and his friends who have done very, very well, John Kasich is a guy who was in Congress for 16 years and then went to work for Wall Street and became a millionaire. He did very, very well. Um, he's a wealthy guy, and the wealthy have done very well 
uh, in this recovery. But middle class <coughs> people, working people, have not. The jobs that are being added, more and more and more of the jobs that are added are minimum wage, low wage jobs. And that's a kind of an economy that really isn't that really isn't working for most people in Ohio. And I don't think he understands that. So for the people that he talks to, it may seem like a miracle. <coughs> for the people that I talk to, it's not. I, I want to tell you one story, a quick story, and then I want to take any questions that you might have. It just kind of shows it's a window into the way they think about Ohio and the economy in the way that I think most of us do. When I was criticizing them for some of their economic policies, um, they came back with a criticism of me. You know, if, if you're a public official, I don't know if anybody here has ever been a public official, but one of the requirements of being a public official, you've got to fill out a form and submit it to the state and list all your assets, okay? And I have one asset, it's my house, that's it. Unless you count my kids as an asset. <laughs> But they're costing me money. Uh, <laughs> so I have one app. This is what this is what is a, was incredible to me. Uh, okay, the go one of the governor's spokespersons came out and said that I had no room to criticize them about economic development because my disclosure form, ethics disclosure form, showed that unlike Governor Kasich, I don't have a big stock portfolio uh, with a lot of investments in different companies. You just think about that. That's probably the first time that one candidate for governor has criticized another for not having enough money. And, and, but if you think about it, I mean, my wife and I, uh, we're not super wealthy, we're not poor, we do, we do fine. Uh, but, you know, my wife works for, a, she works for a public school system, she works a second job, she's working it right now, as a matter of fact, at a hospital on Saturdays, so that we have a little bit of extra money. Um, we have two cars, one we have paid off, one we don't. The one that we have paid off is going to die probably any minute. It's got 160,000 miles on it. Um, we worry about our mortgage payment and fixing up the house and car payments and, and our tuition payments for our kids. Um, we do not have a bunch of money in the bank. Um, but what, what they don't understand, when they see that, they think that makes me less qualified to be governor. I think it makes me more qualified to be governor because uh, I'm doing better than most people in Ohio are financially, but I'm also not living some kind of uh, elite lifestyle um, where I just watch my stock portfolio get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think that's a better background for somebody to be governor than somebody that um, worked for Lehman Brothers for eight years and, and made a lot of money moving uh, financial transactions around. That's just my opinion. Uh, so that's that's kind of my story, why I'm running, why I think we can do things differently in this state. Why don't, why don't I take a few questions, anything on your mind?